All right, so welcome back. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to load your fact table using Azure Data Factory's mapping data flows. In the previous videos, we talked about dimension handling and we were loading up a dim employee dimension table. So we're going to use that uh, dimension here to load our fact table. And there's also accompanying blog posts, and I'll make sure I put links to um, all these different um, series within the description for the video. Now, this is a pattern, a uh, very common a data warehouse uh, fact table loading pattern that's used for dimensional models in data warehouses that you can use in a real world scenario. Uh, that being said, I do want to just you know point out that this is for demonstration. This is an example, so I'm only using one uh, dimension. You'll likely have many more dimensions, and as you add dimensions to your fact loader, uh, let me just minimize this a little bit. Uh, you'll just keep adding sources down here, so your dimension tables will end up coming in down here. So you have a dim employee, probably a dim product, dim date, uh, so on and so forth. You just keep adding those and do your lookups and your joins against those as well. It's the same pattern just repeating for what I'm going to show you now. This is just keeping things simple for a short, brief demo. So I have two sources. My incoming fax, which is a going to be a CSV file. Now the way that I load um, data from CSVs from files within a data factory is that I typically define a data set that is at the um, simply at the container level. Uh, this is a blob, could be ADLS Gen 2 as well, but um, for me I'm using blob and I keep it at the container level. The reason I keep it at the container level is because I can go into source options now and within there I can say that I want to look for um, all CSVs, so you can do full wildcarding uh, Linux style globbing in there. And so I'm saying give me all CSVs within this folder path right there. Okay. Now another typical thing you're going to do when you productionize this and operationalize it is you're going to say delete source files. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, or you can move it to a, you know, to an archive folder. But I'm going to keep it as no action just because I am just demoing this. But uh, that's a common thing you want to do when you put it into production. And then my other source is the dim employee. Like I says, the dim employee um, is the um, loading the loaded data that I have from the other examples for managing that um, slow change in dimension. Uh, attributes. <clears throat> uh, let me see. I don't, think I don't think there's anything else we want to say in this. Uh, in, within the facts, uh, let's just take a look at what the facts look like. So very simple. I created this just for uh, demonstration purposes. So we've got an employee ID that's going to match our employee dimension. This is the business key, so it doesn't know anything about a surrogate key. We have hours per uh, day. So these are uh, different. I'm sorry. The, uh, in this case, the project date. Actually, what I did was it's all the same date. So this is one day of all the work that these different employees did uh, being um, logged. So because the amount being billed in the hours is very possible that uh, you can think of this data as saying that this was, you know, I do this on a Friday or at the end of the week or end of a project is I, I log my time. All right, that's the, that's the use case here in the primary example. So after we bring in our facts, um, what we do is I set a couple of attributes. And uh, this is uh, the way that I typically work within mapping data flows is I'll do my data type conversions. I want to make sure the employee ID is an integer. The source was a CSV. Uh, so you could always use, you could always set the data types here in the projection, but because it's a CSV text file, everything is defaulted to string or use our auto detect and it will detect this for you. I just prefer to do it uh, within a derived column. So that's one way to do it. I just do two integer here at six and a half dozen the other. I'm going to set is current to one because I only want the current. Uh, dimension rows from my dimension table because I have, I'm have i using slowly changing dimension type 2 on there, so I'm not overriding, so I only want the ones that use current. And I always use the timestamp just for logging tracking purposes on my target tables within my ETL. After I set the attributes, I do my lookup against my dimension. So the dimension down here um, does nothing. It, it's, just a, it's just a source hanging off here on its own. It doesn't have anything else associated with it. You could do some manipulation of the rows here, if you like, um, and then join to that, but I'm just doing a lookup straight against the table. And so when I do a lookup, what I'm um, joining on is both the employee ID coming in, the employee ID, sorry, the employee ID coming in, the employee ID uh, business key from the dim employee table. And then I'm looking for only the current rows. And this is why I set this current to one because I only want these current ones. So I just use this as part of my lookup. And then you'll see that when you um, join those together with the lookup, uh, you do get um, all of the other. So the lookup will pull all of the columns from that uh, right hand side of the relationship. So now I get all of the uh, the loads of information coming from my employee table. So I get the circuit key, the region, status, employee function, level, all the things that we loaded up into the employee table come along with it. You can then choose what you want to map, sync, or you can use select to pull out the columns you don't want to pass through to your fact table. 
um, I'll come to that in a minute. But what I do want to say is at this point now, I am uh, this this thick vertical bar says that um, what I did here was a new branch. So when you click plus next to your transformations, if you see a new branch, we'll uh, copy and duplicate that stream of data. The reason why I'm doing that is because I have a couple of aggregates in here. And so my aggregate function is, aggregate transformations right here with two, I think I have two different functions. Yeah, two different functions. I'm totaling the hours, I'm totaling the amount. So the idea would be here that um, my target fact table is going to have the um, granularity of um, day. So I'm using the date as one of my group buys within my aggregate. So aggregating I'm grouping by the project date and by the employee ID, and I'm giving you the total hours and amount per employee per day. But what happens when you aggregate, if you look at the inspect and you look at your metadata, is that the output schema is only going to have the columns that you are working with. So the rest of the um, column propagation stops right there. So I would need to join this back together with the original data so I can have everything that I want to load into my fact table. You do that with a new branch and then a select. With the select, what the select does is it aliases that stream, so I'm just calling this a rich data. This is all my original, untouched, unmodified uh, data. And now I can join that back together at the end. So the way you join it is you just say that coming out of the ag is going to be the project ID and the employee, the project date and the employee ID. You join that to both sides and you'll get all your data back. So when I preview this on the join, you're going to see both the, the new sets of values as well as the original um, data coming in from both the employee table and from the um, uh, and from the new facts. And so there we go. Everything is joined back together. So that's it. We call it sort of a self um, a self join pattern, and I have documented that as well in a video on that too. Now, one other thing I want to show you is I do have a, a derived column here that does some handling for early arriving facts. So uh, it's a common scenario where the um, within data warehousing where the dimension ID is not yet in the dimension table. And so what I decided to do was I created a row in my dimension uh, table that is zero for the employee ID. So when the surrogate key is not found, I'm just going to set the, um, I'm just going to set the value to zero. Actually, what I meant to say was I'm actually setting the, um, setting the employee ID to zero if the employee ID was not found in the lookup. So the lookup back to the um, employee table will come back with no value if that employee ID is obviously not in the dimension table. So if it is, then I'm just going to set it to zero. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I want to indicate that the fact was loaded, but I need to later go in and update that with another process, another ETL process that will update it once the dimension is loaded into my dimension table. And so what I do is I set a very simple expression function that says that if the employee ID coming from that lookup, the dim employee table is null, then set it to zero. Otherwise, use the incoming employee ID. So what that's going to do then is that will say anytime there's a match, just send through the employee ID. But when I go to join my, uh, my rows back together to the original, I can use that employee ID on both sides. So what will happen is, you'll see in, in the results here in my sync, what's going to happen then is all of the existing employee IDs match with the surrogate key, as well as, here's the surrogate key, as well as a few attributes that I decided to put right in my fact table from that uh, dimension table. So you may you know, be a little bit more um, pure in your fact table loading when you use this in production. Perhaps you only load the surrogate key and then allow the BI tools to, to look up the other, and allow the user to look up whatever parts of the uh, dimension table they want. But I just, for demonstration purposes, I stuck in a few right directly here as, um, uh, as attributes within my fact table. And then what I wanted to show you was when you go down into the, um, but the employee ID was not found, then it can still load that uh, fact and all of those attributes, including the surrogate key, are null. And that's coming from a um, from a value that I put in my um, dimension, in my dem imp, my dem employee table, of zero for the employee ID, which has null for these. So that check for early uh, derived column set it to zero because it wasn't found in the lookup. Now what you do then is you use the employee ID from the source file and you include that in your fact table. So I have that right here. So what that means is when you come back around and you update the employee, um, 
dimension table with the with three four three four, then you can do an upsert and an update on your fact table, and you can fill in the rest at that time. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it. Let me show you this in action. This will load our fact table, and you can see for my sync settings um, that I am using insert only because this is a fact table, so no updates unless you go back and re, uh, restate those facts with the uh, late arriving uh, dimension. But you essentially insert to do another action. I batched my loads by 50 just because I don't have a lot of data. And um, I did set a round robin for my partitioning just because I find that this works very well with Azure SQL database. And so now we can go to the load facts pipeline, which is just a single data flow activity. And we can click debug on this. So debug runs will load your table. Um, data preview or debug sessions within data flow does not do any work on the sync. You have to run that from the pipeline debug. And I don't have any rows in there now because I truncated this table just before I ran the demo. So we'll wait for that data to load. And about a minute later, we have the rows. Let me see if that actually took a minute. How much time did we wait for? 55 seconds. Yeah, about a minute. Then you get your loaded data, and you'll see that we have the loaded, the data loaded into my Azure SQL database. And we have the late arriving uh, fact, or early arriving fact, late arriving dimension. The ID is still there, but everything else is null because that matches zero on the lookup. And that's how you do the fact loading within um, Azure Data Factory, Mapping Data Flows.